What's up YouTube, Jason here, Morph Mixology. Welcome back to the channel and the snake room, of course. If you're new here, subscribe, like, and uh, head back and check out some of the other videos that we've got. If you're wondering how all of this happened, videos are in the, uh, in the channel for sure. So this week, another project, go figure. Um, the collection is constantly growing as you as you know, and uh, I wanted to, I, I keep wanting to try the new rack builds, new tub designs, new new ways. Like this one's hanging, the rest of these are all recessed, stuff like that. And I want to try new things and see what I like the best. Um, at some point, I'm sure we'll go commercial, and this will all be uh, stainless steel racks and whatnot. But for the time being, we're going to try something new. So as you guys know. We currently use these combos that I build. They hold either two of the 15s or one of the 32s on every level. Uh, I did build one that has Freedom Breeder 40s. Uh, these used to be gray with the cup, now they're just clear without. And then uh, the last snake rack we built was the 41 quart Breeder female rack. Um, and while I was walking around Walmart one day, I found these tubs. And they are basically the same as this 41, but quite a bit shorter. And I'll show you. So this 41, this one happens to have my girl Scarlet in it, the black pewter female. So you can see how long these are, right? Let's sit over here on the table. This, this is a 28 and it's significantly shorter but it's the same overall size on the outside. So same width, same height, but about half as long. And being 28 quart and this kind of shape, this should be perfect for our males, breeder males. Um, the breeder males typically don't get nearly as big and they don't need as much space. So uh, I'm gonna build actually two 28 quart, 10 high, breeder male racks. And we're gonna move all the males up. Um, along with that, I'm gonna put a couple others in there like uh, Miko, the short tail python. We're gonna put in one of those, he needs an upgrade. And uh, I, think, I think the boas are gonna go into those. Um, one thing I do like about this design, or not this design, but the way I'm gonna build it, is it opens, the tub opens lengthwise like this, and this one will as well. Granted, it's not a huge different length of width, but it'll still open lengthwise. Um, as opposed to in the combo, when you go to the 32 quart, it opens widthwise. And I just, it's not an issue, but I think with like the boas and that, I'm gonna like the fact that I've got a little bit more room front to back to, to get to them. So um, yeah, so I've got everything already. Uh, I went ahead and bought all the sheets of melamine, same thing, three-quarter melamine, like everything else. And uh, it's all cut down to length, but I gotta do a lot of cutting. So, uh, as always, the build sheet will be in the description and on the website. And uh, yeah, we're gonna build two 10 high. It's gonna look almost exactly like this. In fact, it should look identical to this, except not as long. I'm gonna build it the same way I did that one, upside down, with, uh, with a little spacer in it. Um, and actually, I might, I might bring it in here and build it because it's like minus five outside. So um, I'm gonna get all the pieces cut. We're gonna brave the winter for a minute, get all the pieces cut to size, get all the shelves done, and I think I'm gonna bring it in here and assemble it. So let's get to it. Two 28 quart mail mail racks. Let's go. All right. Well, uh, obviously not in the snake room. I am, however, covered in sawdust. So. Um, it's so cold outside and I just wanted to get this done as quick as possible. That's why I didn't film any of the uh, woodworking part of this. Um, but you guys have seen the other build videos. If you want to see like the setup on how I route out the channels and cut the pieces and that, go back and check out those. Um, it's basically ready to go though. I'll show you here. I've got, this is one of the sides. It's not cut to length obviously because I got to make sure I do this right. Um, we got the tops There's one here and there's one somewhere else uh, down there and then uh, Over here is all there's 
two more sides or three more sides I guess and then all of the shelves and again all routed for the heat tape and the temperature probe so there's two 10 high 28 quart racks worth right there um, and again I do the when I when I'm gonna single wrap the the heat tape like so um, I go through and I, I edge out every other side so it's cut down a little bit so that the heat tape fits so anyway uh, this is the part where it's easier for me to just put you guys up and do um, do like a time-lapse thing because this part takes a while basically man I'm looking good so basically uh, I'm gonna clamp them like this the tops specifically you can't see me I'm gonna clamp the top on both sides get the two legs done and I'll probably do I think I'm just gonna do three screws in this one because uh, these are solid side unlike the 41 that I did the strips which will actually make this a little bit easier because I won't have to square up four different corners. Um, so I'm going to do probably three screws each, number eight by three or number eight by two, whatever it is, uh, and get the tops done and set it on the ground again like last time. And I can actually use, I can actually use the same piece of uh, six, eight, eighth inch birch ply that I have here. This was the one from the 41 quart. But since the tubs are the same size width-wise, uh, I could go ahead and just use this again. It'll just stick out the end, obviously. And set it down, set the tub in upside down, put a shelf in, all the way to the top, or bottom, I guess. So we're gonna do that. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get both of these, hopefully. I don't know if I'm gonna do both in the video, but I'm gonna go ahead and try to get both these framed up. Um, I'm gonna save the heat tape for last in this one because I'm not doing individual strips on every shelf like the like the 41. Um, I want to see if there's really much of a difference, especially with closed sides. Since it's fully closed on three sides, it should help keep the heat in the back. So I'm going to try the single piece all the way down. It's about 15 feet, I think. So the temperature drop should be maybe one or two degrees at most. Um, and I always start with the heat tape at the bottom generally, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna wait until all the shelves are in because it's gonna be way simpler than trying to route heat tape and get these set up and because it's all upside down. So you'll see uh, in the time lapse, but I'm gonna set you over here, turn the time lapse on, and I'm gonna try to get these done. I got a lot of work ahead still. Here we go. I wanted to show you, obviously you've been watching, and you can obviously tell I'm not doing it from the ground up like the uh, 41. Um, that would have been, this technique on the 41 would have been really difficult. Luckily my saw horses for my bench are adjustable, so I could have lowered it down, I could have made this work. Uh, but I just wanted to show you what I'm doing here, just so you can see, other than just the time lapse, so you have an idea. So, actually let me grab, So I'll put you there so you have an idea what I'm doing here. So is what I'm doing basically, put this down here, is I'm trusting, this is kind of tough, I'm trusting that my table is flat, um, that there's no uh, like bow in it or whatever, and I'm pretty sure it is. This is a serious countertop that I got here. So using that and a square to verify what I'm doing. You can see these are nice and tight, which is what I like. So obviously we've got this eighth inch birch ply. We're gonna put that in here. Then we're gonna put our tub in like so. I'm gonna go grab a shelf.
Now we're gonna add a shelf in. Make sure, by the way, you put the right side down. I almost put one in upside down. Um, in this case, because of the way it's working, I'm actually building it on its back, which is nice. Uh, not, not required, but it's nice because that means that these tubs are all the way back like they would be anyway. So put the shelf in here, slide it up nice and tight. Luckily, because of this, it holds it in place, which is cool. So then, if you got like a little bit of a lip here, like a little less lip over there, it's not a big deal. It's not gonna be flawless. There's, there's no way to do that. So then, here are my tools here. So then what I'm doing is I'm taking my little square, button it up against the bottom of the shelf. Let me put you on the other side here, so you can see. So I'm taking and button this up against the bottom of the shelf and push on it a little bit so it's nice and tight. And this is cool because since we're using since we're using this eighth inch birch to space it, I have that much room to work with. So if I push on it a little bit tighter to make sure it's square and tight, it's fine because I got, when I take this out, I still have the air gap. So set this in, push on it a little bit, make sure the, the gap is full, mark the edge. And this is gonna mark the edge of the bottom of this shelf. Now, since obviously I can't put, since I can't put this in here, because it doesn't fit, that's what you've been seeing me measure. This is a three quarter inch piece of melamine. Half of three quarters is three eighths. So I just pick a number. So three inch here, the three inch mark, like so. And I'm just moving in three eighths of an inch to the middle, like so. Just kind of visually verify that it lines up roughly with the middle of the board. Then take these clamps, these are corner clamps. These are made by Irwin, I get them at, uh, at Lowe's. Um, take the corner clamp, holds both sh uh, sheets, go to snug it down and again, push on it so it's nice and tight. Cinch it down like so. Oh, I, I skipped a step, hang on. Take the big square first and we're gonna draw a perfect 90 degree line across both of our guides. You can't see that on the middle one here. Obviously I haven't done the third row, I'll flip it over and do those later. So I've got two holes now marked. Then we take the corner clamp, tighten it up, make sure everything looks good and tight. Okay, now if you're not careful since I'm doing this vertically, as we go, the shelves might be angling slightly, ever so slightly as you come down. And you'll go to, this will be centered, this, this hole down here that you can't see in the middle. It'll be centered measuring wise, but you'll go to punch it through there, you'll put a screw in and it'll blow it right out the top of the shelf. It does happen, it happened on my 41. So that's where this big square comes in. So it's what I've been doing. I'll show you here. Hopefully you can see this. I'll set you down the side. So what I've been doing is, I don't know if you can notice there that there's actually a gap at the top, kind of a little bit. So when I go to drill the first hole, I just push on this. Just, and basically I'm just pushing the bottom, this bottom corner in, so that this is all touching in here, which tells me it's perfectly square. So I do that when I drill the middle hole. The top hole I know, is definitely uh, in the right spot, obviously because of the clamp. But the middle one, I push on that when I do it. You also have probably seen this bit I've been using. This thing's super cool, made by Cobalt. I get it at Lowe's as well. It's a quick change. So this piece just goes into your drill like normal. And then you slide this collar up and it comes out. So this side has the drill bit for my number eight screws and a uh, a uh, beveling piece on it to cut the little edge in the hole and then you take it out and flip it around and it's got the uh, star bit for the screws that I'm using. It's just quick release. So cool little tool there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in and then I'll get back to doing it in the time lapse and we'll be almost done here. So we're gonna go ahead, not so worried about the uh, triangle about the corner with the stop one obviously because it's held in place so we can go ahead and line up this 
one here. And I'm just doing enough to just barely cut into that with the beveling bit. Then when we go to do the bottom one, again, we're gonna, we can get it started. Oh, we have two hands. And it's off camera, that's okay. And then I'm gonna push in on the shelf so that the square is touching. Pre-drill it. Then we flip the bit around. And then I'm actually gonna start at the bottom. Again, again, come in here, push on it till it's flush, run the screw in, and now it's all squared up. So, super simple. Go like that. Now we're done. Repeat the other side, so on and so forth. I've got, I think, uh, I got two more shelves to do on this one, and then we can cut the bottoms off and stand this thing up. So, back to the uh, back to the time lapse. All right, there you go. That's uh, that's all the shelves. Um, I guess I can bring it with me, I guess. So yeah, it's it looks great. The tubs fit in here perfectly with just, just the right amount of gap. So they're gonna sit in there just perfectly. Got a little bit of a uh, overhang, like I normally do, about a half inch or so. Um, the astute among you, will notice that it's not edge taped. And I just put it all together. And you would be correct. Um, so it turns out I'm about out of edge tape. In fact, I didn't know this until I started this project, but this is all I've got left. This is gonna be good for maybe all the way around one leg or one side, that's it, so. I buy this stuff by 200 or 250 feet at a time by the roll, um, so I've got more on the way, but I'm not going to be able to edge tape it until then, which is not a huge deal. It's a little bit easier to do these. I guess the shelves more than anything, it'll be easier to do um, before you put them in, but I'm not really worried. I'm just going to all edge tape around the edges, and then I'll do the shelves front, uh, just the fronts obviously because it's a solid back. So not a big deal there, but yeah, not edge taped yet. Good eye. So this next part. This, this part gets, gets messy. Um, I don't know if you, you should be able to see in the frame there. This is the last shelf, obviously. And there it goes, extends way off the frame. There's probably another two feet or so past this shelf that I don't need. Um, the only reason that I don't cut the sides to the overall length that the computer program gives me is it's just not accurate enough. There's no way for me to ensure that it's gonna come out perfectly even because you saw I'm able to move the shelves a little bit at a time as I'm putting them together. Um, so I always wait to do this at the end because I like it to be perfectly flush. Um, and I do it with a router. I've got, <clears throat> I got my router here. It's a skill router, I guess. This is the one that I use everything for. It's an, what they refer to as an on-project router not on table router, um, which means you hold that in your hand, you put it on the project instead of putting the project on a router table. I do have one of those as well. Obviously not gonna work for this. And then I just use, this as a flush cut bit. All that means is it's just straight and it lines up perfectly with this bearing. So all I do with this is I'll set the cutting depth with the router so that it sits just like this. this bit is just barely big enough to do three quarter, um, three quarter sheet in one shot. So I'll do it like this, I'll show you. So I'll set it just like that so that it's got, it's covering all the way over, it overlaps on both edges and that the bearing will touch this shelf. And then that bearing will ride down the face of the shelf like this and it will give me a perfectly straight cut um, even with the bottom of the shelf so that's also a nice thing too if for some reason you get to the end and these aren't perfectly square and you would pre-cut the legs they're not gonna line up obviously so this will do that for me uh, it makes a serious mess I'm gonna have to move you guys way away so I don't destroy my camera with sawdust uh, I hate doing this in the garage but again it's below zero outside so no good there 
Um, as for why I didn't do the bottom or the other, which I guess would be the other side, the, the last holes at the bottom here. Uh, again, with a little bit of variance when you can twist them a little bit, using the square at this point for the uh, first one and the middle one is fine. If you're off by a 16th of an inch at the middle, it's not a big deal. If you're off by a 16th of an inch at the middle, you're gonna be way off at the bottom usually. And you have a much higher likelihood of not being centered in the wood and splitting it out the top and the bottom. So is what I'll do when I cut the legs off is I'll turn it over and then I can use the square like I did on top and square up where the shelf's gonna be, draw my little line here and then tee it off and it'll be perfect that way. I will show you because I'm not afraid to show you mistakes. I'll show you over here. If you look carefully, there is one shelf that has two holes. Isn't that nice? There and there. Again, haven't done the bottoms yet. Um, and no, I'm not going to put a second hole there on the bottom so they all match. So as what happened here was I drew with the square, I drew this line, right? This one here. And then I forgot to go and measure the center. So I put my big square up, drew the line here, drew the line here, didn't think twice, drilled both holes. And of course, by doing that, missed entirely. So... Just keep that in mind. Don't get distracted. Don't uh, don't miss any steps if you can help it. Um, but yeah, without further ado, this uh, I'm going to film this for you because I've not filmed any. I've filmed some of the routing of like the the heat tape and stuff, but I'm going to show you this cutoff. Hopefully, I can zoom in enough that you can see it. But I got to move the camera away so I don't get it dirty. So let's get that done. I know this video is running long, but I, I want to be try try to be as detailed as I can in a reasonable amount of time. So. Um, I'm going to route these off and then I am pretty good to stand this thing up and see how it all looks. So here we go. If you can tell, I'm now covered in sawdust. It happens that fast and it makes a serious mess. Um, unfortunately, so first of all, I, you should have seen the little tag there as I was doing it. Uh, routers inherently are incredibly dangerous if you don't know how to use them or if you don't use them properly. Um, there is a specific direction to use them to, or would, you know, uh, what direction to run them on the pattern um, you might have seen it jump on this side that's because i'm actually running against the or against the direction of the blade which are the bit but i'm used to using it so i know what's going to happen um, but yes they're very dangerous so please be careful also they're not perfect uh, as you can see down here there's a little bit of what i like to call a wowie um, hopefully you can see that or it doesn't quite line up. Now this is, could be a result of a couple of different things. Uh, my guess is while I was using it, I wasn't square. I wasn't like totally flat against it and I might have pulled it off a little bit because it looks like it's cut kind of at an angle. Uh, the other issue could be because this piece is not screwed in down here, it could have moved just enough. Um, it's the bottom, I'm not too worried about it. That's why I always do this from the top down so that the bottom, if I mess up is what happens. This side actually looks really good. This one came out nice. So there you go. That's how it's done. Uh, let me stand this thing up real quick so we can look at it. Cool. So check this out. Bam. Obviously not done. Um, we got to edge tape it. I got to cut the back. I got to figure out what size I need for the back and, and get it done. Uh, I always put a base on it on all my racks. I don't Honestly, I don't know why they're silver built anyway, but now that they're all that way, this one's gonna look silly if it doesn't. So I'm gonna cut a base, put the wheels on it, get it uh, up and running. But before we go 
through all of that, we're missing one step. I said it was almost done. Uh, we're missing a crucial part here. Um, we still need heat tape. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. It's gonna be super simple. I'm just gonna start way down there at the bottom uh, and lay it across. Again, if you noticed how I built these, obviously, um, every shelf has the little slit cut in it. Focus, there we go. And then it comes down, obviously not one on this side because it's over here and so on and so forth. So I'll uh, start all the way down there, lay it across, uh, pull it up into the next one, staple it. So all the way to the top, we'll get to the top up here. Actually, it'll be on this side and I'll pull it about halfway up the wall and uh, solder the uh, uh, plug onto it. I usually, it turns out, I, I, I end up putting the plugs at the top. Uh, you can put them at the bottom. It, putting at the bottom might help with the temperature drop a little bit, who knows, so. And then of course, don't forget, when you build yours, you gotta route out the channel for the, uh, for the temperature probe to stick to the bottom of the tape. And then just put that tub, or that shelf, somewhere in the middle. I probably should've put it here, but it's somewhere in the middle, so. Anyway. Heat tape time. All right, check this out. There we go. That's hard to do when you get down there to the bottom. Um, obviously, the way I explained it originally was incorrect. I didn't start down there because I forgot I had to feed it all the way up. And uh, yeah, that would have been impossible to try to measure and guess. Um, one of the things I do when I route these channels, you'll see some of this is kind of wavy a little bit. Um, first of all, I'm a perfectionist and I try to make it exactly the width of the tape instead of just giving myself a little bit of room. Uh, but I also use a bevel bit. So the router bit I use is actually undercut. So I have it the width of the tape is actually at the bottom underneath the hole than it is at the top. So the very top edge is a little narrower. Um, and if I'm off by just a fraction of an inch, you get this bubbly. So it's not a big deal. It doesn't really matter. I just have to make sure I tack it down in enough places with the staples that the um, tubs don't rub on them a lot. So, but yeah, that's about it. I left this loose, obviously, so I can uh, solder the top. Um, if you're, if you're picky like me and you want things to match, uh, you'll notice that this one will not match any of my other racks because all my other ones start. The top is with uh, the heat tape up, the heating element up, and this one is with it down. Um, if you're really that anal about it, then you need to, you know, top, bottom, top, bottom, you know, all the way to top, figure out what it's gonna be, but oh well. So I'm gonna go ahead and solder this get this moved inside it'll be another day or two for me uh, but it'll be right now for you we'll move it into the snake room i'll get the back cut at some point uh, i'm gonna wait until i get heat tape obviously to finish this video or not uh, uh edge tape to finish this video and then uh then we'll be done so next the next clip you see will be uh will be this thing up and running i think i think i'm just gonna do it that way so like I said, last step is to measure this, cut the back, cut a base, put some wheels on it, and uh, plug it in. So that's gonna be, uh, that's it for the building stage. Next clip you see, is it done? Go.
All right, there we go. They're done. They look awesome. Uh, I'm super, super happy with the way they came out. As you can tell, kind of in the offset there, they line up with the uh, 41 perfectly. These two line up together beautifully, which I love because my OCD hates the fact that they don't line up elsewhere. But uh, yeah, I've been really happy with it. This is actually being shot about a week or so after the build part of this. Um, everybody's in. The temperatures are working great. The humidity's working great. Uh, you saw in that roll, that B-roll the that tub that has Sabrina, the carpet python in it, is working perfect for her. She needs some more room to stretch out, as did uh, Miko, which I didn't show you, the short tail and the other boas. Um, but the cool thing is, now that it's gapped correctly, they're nice and tight, uh, Sabrina's tub doesn't need a lid anymore. Um, I don't have to worry about having a lid so that I, she can't squeeze through it. And that uh, jungle gym that I made her for the little tub is kind of cool in there, actually, because now she's got more room around it. So. Uh, yeah, it's working fantastic. I'm really happy with these two. Um, it's uh, We've got all males over here now. All of our breeder males are in this one. Uh, that's what these little tags are, in case you were curious. It's a tag so I can put it on the female tub when the male is in there. Uh, we do have a couple more males here that are still growing up. Actually, a breeder male and then a couple of grow ups. This is Pickles, in case you were curious. Uh, this is that giveaway snake for KB Reptiles. If you haven't seen that video, head back. I'll put a link up uh, here, I guess. And uh, go check out that video and support them. So he won't be here much longer. We do have others coming in. That's why these are empty. Uh, and I moved Phoebe, the, uh, the uh, spider, lavender spider, posset pied female up. She's not quite big enough for a 32 yet, so we're gonna run her in here for a little bit and then we'll move her to a bigger one. It's kind of like a stepping stone. And then below that is the uh, Boas and Sabrina. So I'm really happy with it. I think they came out really nice. Um, they look so much better now that they're edge taped, obviously. Got them on wheels. All the wheels are the same, so they all line up. And uh, yeah, so thanks for sticking with me, guys. I know it's been a long video. I'm glad that you are uh, enjoying these and coming back and watching the full length uh, build videos. I try to keep them as detailed as possible uh, without making them an hour long uh, but sometimes when you're dealing with a lot of intricate steps it's hard to do that so I appreciate all the love and support. We are well on our way to 5,000 subscribers on here which is huge. Thank you so much for that. Uh, by the time this goes live we're probably through 10,000 followers on Instagram. We're super close right now today that I'm filming this so um, Wow, like I don't even know what to say beyond that other than wow and thank you. It's, that's fantastic. Um, the cool thing about that is if you don't follow us on Instagram already, you should be, first of all. Uh, but the cool thing for us is that means I can put additional features, like I, it opens up new features in Instagram and mo uh, more specifically in the Instagram stories that allows me to interact with you guys more directly. And as we get to hatching, uh, hatching eggs in that, I'll be able to link them in my Instagram stories so you can go check them out directly. So, um, super excited. And we're probably three weeks from eggs at most uh, by the time this goes up. So stay tuned. Thanks for making it this far. If you haven't already, like and subscribe, share the video with somebody that you think might enjoy it. If you build one, let me know. Let me see it. I'm excited to see what you guys are working with. Any questions in the comments, of course, and I'll see you guys next week. See ya.